finally have our hydraulic cylinders. Makes me very happy. So oh, let's see if these things unpackaged. Of course I already have the one on. Tell you wanted a good adventure. Drill through an inch of plate steel with a hand drill. That DeWalt cordless drill I have is shit. That thing, I tell you what, that thing's terrible. It's gotten worse. I've got a few of them. This 20 volt. And that one I am seriously considering putting into the sledgehammer. Plus the batteries. I think we're going to be switching from DeWalt here the next time I have to get power tools like that. Because their quality has dropped so freaking so much I, I can't get over it. And I've been using their stuff for gosh, close to 20 years. And I always always liked it, but getting to a point now where it's just not what it used to be. Oh, why do they have to put adhesive on everything? Okay, so discussion on these cylinders. These cylinders are 4 inch. They're rated for 3000 PSI. Matches up with our pump and the, uh, the two spool valve that we have coming. Now both of these combined at 3,000 PSI will be able to put out 37 tons of pressure on this center portion. Which, in all honesty, is overkill. So the pins are one inch. I have inch and an eighth holes. So there will be a tiny, tiny bit of slop in there. It doesn't bother me too much. It's not like it's, uh, it's just going to be pushing up and it's going to be pushing down. That's why we have welders and things like that, in case we ever have to do any repairs. So, the way I'm orienting these on the, uh, the press, this is our inlet port, and this is our outlet. I'm going to face these to the back. That way we can route all our hydraulic lines hidden from the front and out of the way of any hot steel. That's one reason I wanted all of this up above my work. I didn't want hot steel dropping on things. Uh, we're going to have to build some guards and stuff for the back. We still may even make that hydraulic setup. We may even put that on a separate power skid for this thing. I'm not sure. This thing's going to be plenty enough, plenty heavy enough just the way it is. Now we're also going to be running some 2x2 two two square tube up each side of this before we go and stand it up. And then we're going to work on getting the, um, getting the top die holder made and start getting that fabbed up. It's uh, it's been a long process, but I am really enjoying the project. It's something different, you know, and, you know, always fun to do different things. But, I probably should wait to put these on until I stand it up, but I figure what's laying down might just be that much easier. These aren't light. These are uh, 50, 56 pounds a piece, something like that. Yeah, just once. I'd like to build something that doesn't weigh a thousand pounds. I don't know if that'll ever happen though. We are a channel of extreme overkill. But look at that! Look at that sexy bitch right there! Holy cow! I like that. That is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Now, these do have to work in tandem with each other. They have to work the same. So these things have to be perfectly parallel to each other while they're pushing down. Otherwise, it's going to spring. Things are going to move funny. It's going to make everything go down awkward. We don't want awkward. We want this to be smooth. We also I have an old restaurant cutting board that make good wear plate for whatever we do here to keep that uh, top die on track. I've been kind of racking my brain how I want to do it. And I think I have some ideas, but boy, does that look nice. So I'll pin it before I forget it. Almost starting to look like a press, isn't it? Can't wait to have it all painted and shiny and nice. Boy, I like that. That is pretty.
ready and let's weld this guy up. pins in that thing, whatever the hell I did with them, right there in front of me. I gotta stop these two in the morning marathons I've been doing for the last few months. Man, I'll tell you what, I dry gas a good portion of the day. I can't believe I get anything done. But I've always been a night owl. Oh, let's see. Believe it or well, I guess it would help if I took the clamp off, huh? Brain power, that's what I have, brain power. Come on, you're right there. Don't be that guy. Persuasion never hurt anybody. Okay, one more pin. Let's see if we can get this lined up. Yeah, much easier. Alright, so here's our top die holder. I drilled and tapped this through here because we're going to bolt the dies into this, the H-frame. Um, it might be a pain in the ass, we may revisit it later, but I see the guys do the uh, do the slots where they slide them into it, and I see a lot of times it looks like they, as they heat up, the metal expands, they get hard to drive out of there, and uh, I just want it to hold well. Now, this one inch plate here, so this is one by six, this is one by six. We have one by six underneath it, and then one by inch and a quarter or inch and a quarter by four underneath that. We're going to put some gussets in here from the top corner down to here. We'll probably put three on each side. And that way I don't have to worry about this thing caving or anything. But uh, yeah, so that's her. That's what we have tonight. Um, I still have to run. Let me zoom you back out. Find my hat. wonder why I don't sleep. I'm still drinking coffee. It's 2 a.m. <laughs> Alright. Get totally situated here. Alright, so next time out, what we have to do, we have to make this. We have to make runners for this so everything works the way it's supposed to. We have these squared up nice. This is held out where we need to be. We clamped everything in place before we welded it. And obviously we have to do the gussets. But uh, pretty much we're getting in a really good place here. I've got a bunch of the hydraulic parts. I'm still waiting on more. And obviously I have to get hoses, but I'm probably going to get those last. As I need to uh, see what I have for measurements and all that. Now these centers... Oops, knocking stuff over. These centers for the pins are the same down here as they are up here. We're also going to be adding 2 by 2 by quarter inch wall square tube all the way up and that's going to give a lot of... So this is only 3 8 I beam right here and of course the floor is on the level so she's rocking a little bit right now but um, so this is only 3 8 all the way up through so we're going to need something to strengthen that up and like I said I have that old restaurant cutting board 
I'm going to see, I may make some uh, sacrificial runners to go inside the track, whatever we do here. I'm still thinking this out, I'm still planning it out, what my ideas are in my head. But um, other than that, we're actually in really good shape. Once I get this, the front side done, I'll get everything ground off, we'll paint everything, and then we're going to move to the back side, start getting the hydraulics set up on here. I was going to, I was strongly considering a gas motor for this. And I changed my mind because, to be honest with you, I don't want to be dicking around, running around the backside of the barn to start a gas engine and have all my hydraulics set up sitting outside. It's going to be loud and obnoxious, but folks, it's a metalworking shop. Show me one that's not loud and obnoxious. There's not too many of them out there. But, um, so anyway, so happy when these arrived today. Oh, they're so beautiful. And I had my first blood of the project too. Banged it off of that die, chipping the uh, chipping the flux off the welds. But anyway, that's her, folks. So far, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'm gonna go put this footage on the computer, and I might just go to bed before 4 a.m. tonight. I'm not sure yet. Maybe I'll stay up and edit it. Who knows? Who needs sleep? Sleep enough when we're uh, not here anymore. So anyway, hope you enjoyed it, folks, and I'll catch you on the next one.